Hi, I'm Lindsay Burkhart, Chief Science Officer at the Center on the Developing Child at Harvard University, and I'm excited to share an update about our latest working paper, Place Matters, the environment we create shapes the foundations of healthy development. A wide range of conditions in the places where children live, grow, learn, and play can get under the skin and affect the developing brain and other biological systems, including the immune and metabolic systems, beginning before birth. Through these early developmental processes, the various influences in a child's environment also shape their lifelong physical and mental health in both positive and negative ways. What surrounds us shapes us, both in the short and the long term. And the environments that surround young children are not evenly invested with risks and opportunities. Simply put, when it comes to early childhood development, place matters. We have long known that a child's social environment, including their relationship with their caregiver, plays a key role in shaping their development. But those relationships don't exist in isolation. It's important to expand the frame to consider other aspects of a child's environment that can also affect their health and development. This paper focuses on two key aspects of that broader environment, the built and natural environment. The natural environment includes things like the quality and temperature of the air that we breathe, the availability of a clean water supply, and the ways that climate change affects the power and frequency of things like floods, hurricanes, and wildfires. The built environment includes things like a child's access to nutritious food, safe green space and housing, and neighborhood infrastructure like roads, bridges, and sidewalks. The social, built, and natural environments that surround a child interact with each other and shape how children develop in deeply interconnected ways, with potential effects in early childhood as well as well into the adult years. Every environment is infused with a combination of influences which can have positive and negative impacts on health and development, but levels of exposure to risk and access to opportunity are not equally or randomly distributed. They are deeply rooted in public policies and social history. Extensive research has shown how things like zoning regulations, real estate and banking practices, and government actions, both through historic discrimination and current practices, have contributed to structural inequities that impose substantial hardships on families of color raising young children. All children, regardless of where they grow up, should be able to live in an environment that supports their healthy development. And all communities have aspects of the built-in natural environment that have been designed through decisions made over time and can be redesigned to support healthy development. We have a powerful opportunity to bring fresh thinking to early childhood policy and investment at the community level, taking into account both the latest science and community expertise. This means extending beyond the traditional boundaries of the early childhood field to broaden the types of policy spaces that are seen as affecting the foundations of early childhood development and health, both lifelong physical and mental health. That includes sectors like urban planning, rural development, environmental protection, climate change, and anti-discriminatory policies. In short, we need to continue supporting strong caregiver-child relationships, and we also need to focus on the environmental conditions that affect those relationships and how these conditions impact children's developing biological systems. With a coordinated, community-informed strategy, we can create a society where all children can live, grow, play, and learn in places that support their development and lifelong health.